Okay, so let me ask you a very basic kind of abstract question. Do you believe something can come from nothing? Is it possible for something to come from nothingness? No energy, no matter, no space, nothing. That's such a hard question, I feel like. Why? So nothing is the absence of something. Let me put it to you in a mathematical form. Zero plus zero plus zero will give you a... Zero plus zero plus zero? Zero. zero. Can zero ever, ever give you one if you keep multiplying zeros? No. So if there was nothingness, can it ever amount to something? No. Right. So can something come from nothing? Yes. How? You mean no? I mean no, yeah. yeah no. It's okay. I mean no. Yeah, so we, we, we say that you cannot have something coming from nothing. So where did the universe come from? Because we know the universe cannot come from nothing. It has to come from something. Do you yeah, agree? So obviously before the Big Bang, what was that? People cannot explain. Yeah, there has to be something before the there's, Big Bang. There's something that I, it's like a theory and it's obviously, it's essentially impossible to prove, but some people are saying that the universe is on like an endless loop. So how the Big Bang happened. I know what you're saying. It's yeah. going to keep expanding and expanding, but then it'll go back into another Big Bang. And, I know, I know, I know, I know that. I believe this, this is the weakest kind of uh, view today in, in the scientific field, right? Yeah. And, and it is weak because it goes against the history that we look at. Like we see the universe expanding, we see the, the, the evidences for the expansion of the Big Bang, we see different things that tell us that this is not true. You yeah. get the point? There, are, there is a starting point. But even if we were to accept this idea, we still have to explain why is the universe in existence? Where did it come from? Exactly. Yeah. Even if it's, it's... Even if that is... True. percent true. Yes. How? How is the energy and matter and, and the stuff there. There exactly. still needs an explanation. Do you get the point? So what we say, uh, uh, that, that has to come from somewhere. Now let me ask you this question. This table, do you believe someone made this table? Yeah. Right? Have you seen the maker? I have not. So why do you believe someone made this table? Because I know someone, you have this, to. By the way, this is this is custom made. No one has a similar table to this one, yeah? <laughs> so why do you believe someone made this table? Don't tell me I saw a table like it because there's no table like I it. I think someone must have made each individual part somewhere. So someone you're saying is this Design. Yes. You say it requires intelligence, knowledge of language, yes. power, Material. combining material together. Yes. Without all of these things, can you make this table? Without all of those things, no. All right. So right now we know a lot of, about the maker of this table without seeing him using the table. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Now let's put that on the universe. What do you need to create a universe? Partners. Let me tell you, look, the universe is all atoms. Yeah. Each atom is composed of an amount of power we cannot even comprehend. When you split it, you have a nuclear explosion, right? So how much power do you need, even uncomprehendable, the energy and power that you need, right? So something has an amount of energy we cannot even, and power we cannot yes. even comprehend, right? comprehend, Yes. And intelligence and wisdom, having all of these orbits, gravitational fields, planets, galaxies, right? Something that is not bound by time and space the same way we are. Right? Because the creator created time and space the, with, the, with the Big Bang. Yep. So that means he, the same laws that apply to us do not apply to him. Facts. Make sense? Yes. Okay. In that case, it would be, if you were to believe that, then it would be. Yes, I, I get what you're getting at. So it is creator, right? So in, in, in a sense, you believe in God, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a so good way to say it. Yes, so we say we believe in a creator. We don't need to see the creator. Yeah. Because we see the effects of the creator. We see the design, and design will have to be the designer. You yeah. cannot bring the universe into existence without these attributes. And if you possess these attributes, then that's what we call God. Yeah. Make sense? I, yeah. So you believe in God? Yes. Or you accept God? I still How do they even call it belief? Because it's rational now, right? Exactly. You still can't? You still can't? Tell me. I guess in that way, Way I do, but I wouldn't say I like believe in it. I, I don't know how to because my friend he has the same argument to me. He's Christian and he basically said the exact same thing. Okay, and that's my closest friend. I just can't, like, I need, I need to, like, it depends. Look, see it to believe it, but yeah, it depends what you mean by believe, right? That's why I said to you, you know, look, if something makes sense to you, do you accept it? I guess so, yeah. Right? So I, I, I would separate between How belief. Do you explain that does it all make sense? All the things you explain. Makes sense. Make sense. So so it's a rational argument and the, the you have assumptions, these assumptions make sense. Yeah. The conclusion must follow. Correct? I guess so, yeah. So so I would say you accept the existence of God. There's nothing about belief there. Just like you wouldn't say you believe there is a maker of this table. 
you know that has to be a maker yeah. of this table. Yeah. Because rationally, you cannot create the table without it. Yeah. So you know there is a creator of the universe yeah. because the universe cannot exist without it. You're right. Make yeah. sense? Yeah, you're right. So but, but don't use the word belief because I'll tell you why. That's a thing. lot of people think belief equals blind faith. This feeling, fuzzy feeling in the heart that will come. No, there's no such thing. So whether you accept something or you don't accept something, is rational and makes sense. Yeah. I adopt the idea or I reject the it's idea. Binary. Yes. It's so either God exists or it doesn't exist, right? So if you accept the, the, the logic, then you accept the conclusion. Okay, yeah. So I would say like 90, 10, yes, no. Okay. Okay, the 10. I want to talk about the 10. Where does the 10 come from? Just because I'm scared. But I like 100%, you know? So I know. Tell me, okay, let me tell you something. Is anything absolute 100%? No. Ah, uh, then I got I got your problem now. This is the issue now. I don't think this is. Did did you? Who do you listen to? Or or have you read any books? Who do you listen to online? Um, Sam Harris, Richard Dawkins, these type of people. Like you know, Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson, yeah. Who else? All those types of people. Sure. So the the these the those type of people that you're talking about uh, are the ones who will give you this idea of doubt, right? Do you exist? You. Yeah. How do you know? Think it, therefore I am it. So you're using Descartes Cogito, which is I think therefore I am. Yeah. That's what you're using. But this has even been criticized. If you if you want to be skeptical, what does I mean in that statement? I you have to have a concept of language. Consciousness. No, no, you have to have a concept of language. You have to have a concept of oneself yep. separate from others yep. in order for you to make that statement. True. So where do they come from? Just me observing. But you cannot observe unless we still establish that you exist first. What is me? I guess so. so you have so to like accept existence. It's like, what is the thing that's behind my consciousness, essentially? Right? Yeah, no, not only that, you would accept that language exists, uh, uh, the, 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 the separation, the, the identity, a lot of identity, separation between objects. Like, I'm different than you, you are different than me, etc. So you have to accept all of these things to bring the Kagitu. What the Kagitu assumes is just consciousness. No. If you say, I think, you assume that there is thinking, there's a concept of thinking, you assume there's a concept of I, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you ask, it's already, no, no, no. Do you get the point? Okay. This is the criticism. Look, if you want to be skeptical, you will not be able even to accept your own existence. This life becomes absurd. That is well, meaningless. Now, I think everything's just mathematics. So like, the universal language is math. So are you using mathematics now? Yes. How? The sound waves from my voice. Not mathematics. That is math. It's math. Can you physics. define mathematics? Define mathematics. Yeah. Can you get your phone and I go to a dictionary and to put, me, put mathematics? Mathematics. My definition is the language of the universe. Okay. So does any? I think language anywhere, like no, maths anywhere in the universe, in any universe. Does any dictionary on Earth define it in the same way you do? I'm not sure. Uh, the answer is no. Okay. So when you say mathematics, you use a word without already defining language. So that's yeah. why I'm disagreeing with you, right? So we have a new word now that words have a lot of meaning. Many Absolutely. Meaning. So you cannot use the word mathematics that already has I a meaning. Mean. Right. So, so it's not mathematics it anymore. The whole purpose. Yeah. Yes. Do you get the point? Yes. Yeah, so okay. why is it that you believe that? I, I believe it. So it's not mathematics, though, is it? No. I, Magic. <laughs> so, look, let me magic. ask you this: like, like, be serious with me. Like, no, you, you, you say you believe in magic. Look, look, look. I'm asking no, you. No, I this. don't believe in magic. No, but Actually, you just said that. I do believe in magic. Okay, but but if God created, like, I would say that God created everything. So magic, super. You don't call things. that magic. Again, you use word. By the way, I'm very particular with my words, right? Yeah. Because words convey meaning. No. Yeah, words convey meaning, and and people will misunderstand what you say if you miscommunicate what you say, right? You have to be very particular with the terms that you use. You're so right. if you say if you say magic, that does not apply to God. What we believe, this is the abilities of God. The attributes of God are in manifesting in creation. It's not magic. What we call magic is something from nothing, for example, right? So like me bringing rabbit now yeah, from thin air or something like that, yeah. or astro astrology for women or something. This is magic, right? Other than that, we don't, we don't believe in magic, right? Okay. So we believe, you say you accept the existence of a creator, right? If you put this 10%, 10% is useless as long as it makes sense logically. If it follows logically, consistent, I should accept the principle. Yeah. Even Descartes himself lives his life based on that. If it makes logical sense, I will accept it. You understand? Yeah. So, and I'm a, I do computer science. Okay. I'm a logical person. And Good. the way you explain it to me, I can't really argue it. Yeah, so I'm because just look, thinking. I'm just telling you common sense, you know? Yeah. Uh, uh, what I'm saying is very, very basic common sense. Because look, 
this is our, our point. We trust our, our experiences. Yeah. You don't live your life doubting that you don't exist, even with a 10%. No. You don't live your life the, doubting that she's not here or he's not here or I'm not here. You don't live your life like that. If you live your life like that, you'll go in front of the bus, you know, because maybe the bus doesn't exist, yeah. right? But you're not gonna live your life like that because you know the bus is there. You intuitively trust your experiences. You know that you exist. So there has to be axioms to everything. I have to accept my existence. I have to accept the universe's existence, right? And I have, based on that, then I make logical conclusions. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's how Muslims operate. Because without that, life becomes absurd. Just as, like I was just trying to say yeah. to you, right? Makes a lot of sense. Okay, so there is a creator. Based on there is a creator, we say there is purpose as well. Because everything created is given purpose by the manufacturer and the maker. It's like destiny. Yes. In a, in a way, we believe that. We, we have a different understanding of it, but we believe it, right? So this bottle, for example, yeah. the one who gave it a purpose, the one who restricted it in a specific way was the maker. So what you create, you give purpose to. So if we're created by the creator, the creator by definition gives us purpose. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. Right. So we say as Muslims, there are different prophets and messengers. These prophets and messengers came in the past, you heard about Jesus, Moses, Noah, Abraham, right? Yeah. They come to tell you your purpose in this life. And they bring you a revelation from the creator. And within that revelation, they tell you your purpose in life. Now the question is, how do I know whether someone is a messenger of God or not? Ask them. Okay, if I said to you I'm a messenger of God, do you accept it? Yeah. Okay, but you have a very low bar now of acceptance, <laughs> yeah, right? No. Because, okay, if everyone says I'm a messenger of God, how many religions would we have? How many gods would we have? How many? Right. There has to be something There has to be something that substantiates the claim that you make. From a Muslim perspective, we say the following. The mess in order for us to accept someone as a messenger of God, he has to demonstrate something that I cannot do. Because the Creator did. Because the Creator can break the laws that, that we... What about learning? If you learn to do that thing, that doesn't apply. That's what I'm saying. Something you can't even learn to do. Okay. You cannot... Something basically impossible to me. Yes. Something outside the natural laws yeah. of humans. Like for example, Moses bringing a stick from the road and uh, parting two seas. You know, I cannot do that. You cannot do that. You cannot learn how to do that. You get the point, yeah? yeah? So these are what we would call miraculous acts. To demonstrate these people are messengers, right? Similarly, Prophet Muhammad brought his own type of miracles to demonstrate that he is a messenger from the Creator. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Do we know the future, me or you? I think the future is the present. Okay. I think the future Again, you know, we have to be particular with the terms. Now think, think about what you just said. Definition of present and definition of future. Think about the two definitions. In English terms. Yes. That doesn't make doesn't any make sense. sense but exactly. How I think about it, it makes sense. You're just saying there's a married bachelor. There's a squared circle. That's in essence what you just said. Essentially. Yeah. But contradictions don't exist in reality. Fair enough. Which would mean it's impossible for you to say the future is yes, the past. You can say, let me let me put it to you and maybe what you're trying to say in a better term. Yeah. The, the, the past influences the future. Yes. That's a way to put, yes, to that's put why it. That's people get anxious. Do you agree with that? So that's what you're trying to say in a way, right? Yeah, yeah. So the, the, the past will influence the future. That's why we have the saying that history repeats itself. Yeah. Because if you go through doing specific thing in a specific way, there will always be the same outcome, yeah. right? Okay. What we say, the future to come, 1,000 years later or 2,000 years later, can you and me know the, the details of what humans will be doing? No. So if I brought to you the Prophet Muhammad 1,400 years ago, no telescopes, no microscopes, no cars, no technology. If he said to you what will happen today, would you accept that he's a messenger from that creator that we talked about? So if you brought him from then? No, no. If I brought the miracle, the claims that he made, that yes. are carbon dated written, like yeah. in the Quran and the prophetic tradition, yeah. we know he said them over a thousand years ago yeah. and they're happening today. Would that be evidence that he's a messenger of God? Because he's, and he said, it's not my knowledge, it's yeah. God's knowledge. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because as we said in the beginning, miracle. as we said in the beginning, God is not bound in the same laws that we are. So he can know the future. Yeah. Right. So Allah can tell Prophet Muhammad the future. So if we see the future happening, this evidence that Prophet Muhammad is a messenger. Make sense? Yeah. Right. I'll give you a few uh, uh, examples of what Prophet Muhammad said. Prophet Muhammad said, you will see the barefoot Bedouin Arabs. You know the Bedouin Arabs? Bedouin Arabs are Arabs who live in the desert. They don't have buildings and civilizations okay. and cities, right? Yeah. He said you will see the Bedouin Arabs competing in building the tallest buildings. Where's the tallest building today in the world? Khalifa. Burj Khalifa. He said that 1,400 years ago. You know, 60 years ago, Dubai was a desert. Yeah. What, what happened? Why did, why did it change? Oil. Oil. Excellent. Do you know, he said 1,400 years ago, the earth will puke as treasures and money will become abundant within you. Now, oil was not of value until today. So today we're using it in all of these technologies. Yeah. Yes. So would he have known that? Not only that what they will do, but how they will be able to, uh, to, to do what they do. 
It's a bit mad, yeah. Yeah. It's now, a bit mad. Prophet Muhammad said, I'll give you a few now. Okay. Prophet Muhammad said, the woman will be taken, her belly will be cut open, and the baby will be discarded out out of fear of having pregnancy. What do you call that today? C-section. Now, how would he know that 1,400 years ago? And he said, out of fear of having pregnancy. You know, in the past, if you cut a woman, she's dead, that's it. Yeah. It was no the technology yeah. that we have today to actually... Incomprehensible at the time. Yeah, things you can't even think about. Yeah. Prophet Muhammad said the deserts of Arabia will become green again. Now, let me show you something. I'll show you something interesting, yeah? From a Muslim website called NASA, yeah? <laughs> show you something interesting now, give me one second. So, when Prophet Muhammad said that the deserts of Arabia will become green again, what does again mean? Yeah, so it will come back. So it's already happened. So in the past, he's making two claims. He's making a claim about history that the deserts of Arabia used to be green. Yeah. And then he's making a claim in the future that the deserts of Arabia will turn green again, meadows and rivers, like they used to do. Yeah. Okay, now look. Let me show you first. You know Nature Magazine, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Very Another Muslim respectful. website, yeah? Okay. <laughs> so, of course, Nature Nature Middle East, yeah? Okay. So, unrevealing Arabia's green past. So, they show you fossils. They show you uh, traces from 10,000 Asian lakes okay. using satellites. They show you fossils of animals, like elephants that only live if there is an abundant amount of water. Okay. So, they say thousands of years before, yeah. there was water in, the, in these deserts of Arabia. Now, we know that because of technology, like satellites yeah. and all of these fossil fossil information but how prophet muhammad know the, the history now he's talking about the future not only not only the, the future but the past as well right nasa look this is a desert of arabia look 1987 1991 2000 2012 do you see the difference yeah magnificent difference right why where did this, all this greenery came from technology we're able to access the water deep within the earth mm. huh. well i've got a Go I think it's just the natural cycle of Earth. If we were not doing any of this technological advancement, maybe that would be happening in 200 years from now because it'd be slower. Because the last if we if we're not using ago. technology, if we're not using technology, this will happen. Yeah. Excellent. Let just me ask natural. you this question: How do you know all of that? Just from previous from our technology studies. from our technology as humans and advancements of knowing we how the earth works past. thank you yes. but did prophet muhammad know that 1400 years ago oh. you see you this i want you to put yourself there yeah. 1400 years before oh. things were not as we today we understand a lot of things about the world right so what you're saying is only proving the point you get the point you get you. yeah that he knew these things that we're just learning today or we learned today right the question is could he and by the way i can give you 20 over 20 predictions yeah, right now yeah right the question is and that's one example could he have known that if he was not a messenger of God okay I'll give you more I'm not only even though you agreed already but I'll give you more the Quran talks about the natural phenomena the earth how things happen in the world that we are learning about today for example the Quran talks about the universe expanding yeah and we learned that in the 1900s they're using a Hubble telescope yeah magnificent. Red shift, blue shift. yes all of that exactly so you know about the shift, the excellence yeah. right the wave the length of the galaxy the yeah. fabric of space is, is uh, stretching so these are observable things yeah. but that's in the Quran 1400 years ago oh. the Quran Quran said we build this heavens with power and we're expanding it 1400 years ago the Quran talks about biology it says that every living thing is made from water yep. chapter 21 verse 30 it says that we've made every living thing from water today we know cells yeah. everything that has cells has water yeah. isn't it I thought that was carbon it does no, no, water, you know, water, yeah, every cell has 60, I think 60 to 70 percent water, right? For humans, yeah. You no, know, every living thing. So these plants have, have water, animals have water, every living thing. A cell, every living thing, yes. yeah, every yes. living thing yes. has a cell and, and every cell you contains water, is. right? So, so, so the po point is this, the Quran is talking about that. The Quran is talking about mountains and how mountains have deep roots within the earth, mm -hmm. how they stabilize the earth. You know, there's a process called isostasy where the, the mountain pushes is the crust of the earth yeah, yeah. it helps stabilizes the earth there is less collisions taking place to... exactly you know a lot of these things right but you have a lot of scientific right, knowledge right i'll give you so one, so uh, you can talk to my friend Khaled. Okay. Khaled. i'll give you one how uh, did the uh, egyptian sun go can, bra, can you talk to my friend over sleep. there no bra go to sleep and it disappeared sure it ain't real sure thank you <laughs> uh, Khaled, can you okay he's gone <laughs> some people are like yeah. uh, gone okay <laughs> coming back to what we're saying so all of these by the way there are other evidences now 
you agree with me that he has to be a messenger of God. This is how we view ourselves as Muslims, right? In the way we've been talking about and all the reasoning you gave us, I agree. Yes, and everything I told you I can give you references for, right? Yeah, I believe that. Yeah, so what we're saying as Muslims is the following, right? Islam is a rational religion. We follow things based on evidence. Evidence is there, it makes sense, it's rational. We follow it, that's why we're Muslims. There's no blind faith, there's no just believe it because people believe it, you get the point? Yes. Okay, 